Hey, what's happening, everybody? Peace. It's your favorite leather craftsman, R.D. Muhammad, plugging you in with the information on how to just improve your work. I'm still tying in two different, <laughs> two different businesses into one, so you guys bear with me. But I'm your favorite leather craftsman, uh, letting you guys know just some different things and stuff that I have learned over the years where you can maximize uh, your profits on the back end uh, by just giving you some quick a uh, little small project that can make a lot of money and keep you busy as well as, you know, again, put a lot of money in your pocket. Uh, and these are all, these little series videos is just basically making stuff out of scrap leather, leather that you have left over. A lot of times as leather crafters, we, we, we have big projects that we make, but then you wind, wind up with a lot of scrap stuff left over. And it's like, what do I do with all of this scrap? And if you don't know how to utilize every piece of that hide, man, you'll have that stuff growing out your ears and then you got more scrap leather than you have room in your shop to do with. So this is why I come up with these videos uh, to show you guys what all you can make. Uh, and not just for that, but for the beginner crafters and the intermediate crafters, you know, who really don't have their footing or know their niche market in this business uh you guys can watch these videos and get ideas right okay so let's get started today's video i'm going to be talking to you guys about leather earrings leather earrings has been my go-to for a lot of years especially when i'm going to a city event uh or a flea market i pretty much don't do flea markets anymore but city events uh, I don't do flea markets at all anymore, uh, but city events or arts and crafts shows, things like that, um, you want your table to be fully dressed with all sorts of possibilities and crafts and product. Uh, so it, it gives your customers a little more insight into what all you can do as a crafter. So um, now, one, I'm going to drop the links for these. I, uh, these are your earring holders or the hooks. I'm going to drop the links for these uh, into the video or into the description below so you guys will know exactly where I bought these from. Uh, these are great, actually. I love these because all you do, once you put these inside your earring, all you do is just close this little top up right here and then it holds to the earring, right? Now, the, uh, these are in nickel, uh, and these are the uh, non-lead, non-lead. Now, there is a reason why I say that. You guys do not want to do, um, for some reason or another, uh, when I was doing the research and when I first started making these, a lot of the customers were saying, are these lead earrings or the, the hooked hooks? And I had to scrap the first batch and go back and buy the non-lead. Now, the reason why I had to scrap those, one, they were the cheapest. And you can get like a hundred of them. This is a hundred here. Uh, and I paid almost $2 for these two. But the lead ones, uh, man, I can get a hundred for like 83 cents. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? But for some reason... It was a most requested or the most question were uh, are, were my uh, hooks lead base. So don't buy the lead. You can get these off of Amazon, Timu. Uh, you can get them from AliExpress, Alibaba, uh, Pinterest. You might find some links on Pinterest or definitely links on Etsy. But do not buy the lead ones. You want to buy the uh, lead and nickel uh, or lead free, all right? Now, these are, the, these are the silver ones and the brass ones because I got them two different colors just because I wanted to be able to um, change it up a little bit. I don't know why, but um, change it up a little bit. And the brass ones are pretty much the same thing. They have these little uh, hooks. So you'll put your earring on this end and it has a ball stop. So, and then all you do is just close that up, push that ball stop up to the uh, other part of the earring. Now, uh, and they also come with the 
stoppers on here, right? So uh, they your customers won't lose their earring. Now, one thing that I did that I added to this particular because I wanted to, again, increase the value in Tooth there. I also made my earring holders out of leather as well. So once I completed and made the earring, I would go ahead and put the hooks in, and then like I would take a piece of scrap, another piece of scrap leather, and I would punch two small holes, and then I would punch me a hanger hole, uh, a little bit bigger, um, that and I can hang these onto my. I made a leather earring tree again out of scrap. Yeah, it can hold like twenty five pairs of earrings on there, um, and it's just like a little. It's cool. Maybe I might show you guys how to do that later on. But everything that's on my table is 94% leather. Even what holds my business cards, it's made out of leather. Because I, it's not just there to hold my cards, but what if I have a customer that walks up to the table and they want, uh, and they see that leather business card holder and it's like, hey, can you make one of those? I'm like, yeah, actually, that's going to be another video later on down the road, a leather business card holder. In this business that we live in, ladies and gentlemen, the biggest key is your creativity. And even the sky is not the limit on the creativity. Uh, if you can dream it, you can make it happen and come true. So, but I also, uh, again, I make my leather hangers that holds the earrings out of leather as well. And then I just take my, my uh, maker's mark and I stamp it into the leather holder. I stamp my maker's mark into the leather holder as well as the backside of the earring. They can't get away from this ear, my earrings being made at Premier Leather Craft. They can't get away from it. So if somebody walks up to them and say, hey, girl, I like them earrings you got. Where you get them from? And then all they have to do is just turn that around and say, hey, look, I got it from this guy right here. Uh, look him up on social media or look, Google him. And this is what it is. And they'll see. Uh, so even when they pull up, Premier Leather Crafters, once they see my maker's mark on to my profile, boom, they know they got the right one. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is show you guys my the, the patterns that I have made and come up with over the years. So let me angle. I'm going to pull these back. And I have had these a long time. These patterns don't take a beating. Uh, uh, they, they really don't. And you can use them over and over again because, again, they're just being made out of the, uh, they're just being used to trace. Now, I apologize right off the break before we get too far in. Uh, I got the big mic today because I didn't charge up my small lapel mic. So, don't let this get in your way of checking this out. So, I'm going to angle the camera down. And these are the different patterns that I have come up with over the years. Now, let me give you a little bit of insight on these because these two patterns here, these two, I generally just use these, um, uh, well, these two and all of the solids, all of these on this row up here. So let me go this way. I normally do these, uh, not normally, uh, it depends. You don't have to tool each and every last one of these. Um, I'll cover them up in different types of skin, snake skin, alligator, ostrich, whatever the case may be. If I have some of that material still scrap left over, I will go ahead and make some crocodile or alligator earrings, or I'll make some um, uh, snake skin earrings. Uh, if I had enough of the zebra skin, I would have made some zebra print Earrings. Now, this, unfortunately, it was going to be a gun holster. <laughs> Again, you never know what your customers are going to like. Because they don't even know what, they, what they're going to like until they actually see it in live and in color. Now, I wouldn't have never come up with this concept to do a zebra 
gun holster because of the hot, the hair that's on here. But the lady, she didn't want a pink holster, which I have already done one of those before. She wanted something completely different. She loved the zebra, the hide. And so I said, hey, we can make it work. Now, but again, you never know what your customers are going to like until they actually see something that's in front of them. But you got to take the, the, the zebra hide and cover these up. Uh, you got rabbit pelts or uh, the fox fur. You can cover these up. Now, that would be real cool, especially here in the winter, to, going into the winter months. Now, you guys, winter is a lot colder than mine here in Florida. But you can take, uh, like if you're going to do, uh, I forget what they call the little Russian-style winter hats, you know, um, but if you can make one of those out of one of the rabbit pelts or the beaver pelts or the fox fur, and then you have a set of earrings. Now, that's a gift, something that you would give to a woman, but unique, unique within its own because you can't find those two items together in a major department store. So that would be, now that's an extra added value, especially if you get the pattern or create the pattern to do the hat. And then you have that on top of your mannequin head, which I'm ooh, I'm really thinking about coming up and doing something like that. Uh, but you can put that on the mannequin's head and then have your earrings also on the mannequin head. So when the customers see that, if they see it on your website or see it on your table, live and in person, now they can visualize what it will look like on them. That might be something to look into. Don't be surprised that video comes out. But uh, now these here, uh, these these style earrings here, I would do these and an inlay. So you still can do your snake skin or your your crocodile or your alligator or whatever the case may be by using the center parts as an inlay. And I'll probably show you guys to do an inlay video uh, one of these days. But, however, however, you can use these to inlay in that. And it gives it a whole entire different look and an appeal. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to just show you guys just what we can you can do with these. So I'm going to choose, I'm going to choose this one here to um, go ahead and show you how to carve and make these. And these are real easy and simple. They're real easy and simple. I actually started doing one because I want to show you guys this one particular pattern or this one particular tool that we love, and then I messed it up. So this is actually take number two on this video. Uh, but I'm going to show you guys how to do this. Two to three ounce leather is going to be the ideal weight, preferably two ounce. Uh, that way the leather is not so heavy that it will cause a pull on the, the ear. So I'm going to case this real fast. Now, um, normally I will let this soak in a little bit. Uh, actually, I think I will. I'm just going to go ahead and, and prep this up all the way correctly. But in, while this is casing, I'm going to give you guys and let you guys know the tools that I am using, right, to get this particular pattern done. So um, now I'm going to take my wing dividers, and I love these wing dividers. These you can get grab these uh, pair at Harbor Freight. Now this is more like wel welders wing dividers because it just has the two points. Now it has a slot for the pencil, but you really don't use that too much. Uh, you probably will ever use it because all we all I'm using these for is to scribe my line into my leather that gives me a border. Now, um, most people will say, well, oh, man, I would just cut the earring out and then just do it that way. Now, let, what you will find yourself, and this is a leather secret. Crafters, it doesn't matter what you are working on. You want to have a piece. It's like if I'm doing multiple earrings. I'm going to trace out all of the earrings on this one particular scrap piece. Why? Because I do not want my project to start changing shape and warping. I don't want to do that. So 
the bigger the piece, go ahead and transfer your pattern and your print onto the entire piece. And then even if you do cut it out, I'm going to leave it to where I have a big enough edge to where once I tape it, uh, I don't have my, I don't have to worry about the project moving. I don't have to worry about it warping or being out of shape because the more the piece, the, the leather is connected together, the less likely you're going to have oops moments. So that's why you don't want to cut it out. I'm going to go ahead and scribe it into while it's all put together. And so I'm going to use my wing dividers. These are $2.99 at Harbor Freight. Grab you a pair. It just gives you, it just scratches your borderline. I'm going to also come back. You guys have seen that one before. You guys have also seen my modeling spoon before. Uh, you've also seen the steep, be smooth beveler. And this, these are all craft tools. This is the B200 steep beveler. I was going to use this rope stamp, but then I changed my mind on it. So I'm not going to use the rope stamp. I'll do that in another video. But I am going to use my small camouflage uh, tool, which is another craft tool. And this is C, C for Camouflage 709. C for Camouflage 709. All right? Now, this one is the one that I am really excited about showing you guys what this tool can do. This is why if you check out some of my other videos, and I, I might have did a video on that, but I can't remember. But uh, those video series are knowing your tools and what they can do. I did not know what this tool could do until I just, when I was at Tandy, I was like, I know it's got to do something real cool. I just don't know. So I bought it while, again, the best time to buy tools from Tandy is Black Friday or the week before Christmas. The week before Black Friday, and you can get tools at a whoa, 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 way, way dramatic drop cost. But if you just want to play around with some stuff, um, buy your tools at that play around price at Black Friday. It's every year. Now, you can buy them anytime that you want to, but um, I think I paid, well, this was a long time ago too. So they had marked them down from $7.99 down to $2.99. Some of them was even $1.99. But I just looked at it, I was like, mm, I'm just going to take a chance on it. I mean, you never can have too many tools. My dad used to tell me that all the time. I don't even care if you got two of them. You can never can have too many tools if this is the business that you're going to work in. All right? All right. So, but this is the one that I am excited to showing you guys how to use. This one here makes heart shapes. This is going to be a very cool tool to see put to work, all right? So, and then I have my compass and my um, art pencil. So let's get to, first I'm going to draw me a center line right here. Just very light, not hard, just very light. Just a very light center line, just for me to see it. Because once I go to tooling this, I don't want that pencil line to show up into my tooling work. Now I'm going to come back with my wing dividers. Boop, doo -doo 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 -doo. Let me just go ahead and do this because it was already set. And all I'm going to do is just lightly pull. And that way I can turn it at the same time. And see where my line is. Take your time, as always. I tell you guys to do the same thing in all of the videos. Repetition is... Saying it is not as... Probably not as bad as you guys hearing it all the time. But that can't be stressed enough. The importance of making sure that you take your time. Now, uh, what I'm going to do here is... Um, I'm going to drop these in. I'm not even going to put another border around there. I'm going to leave it just like that. So, uh, and you guys can see, just barely scribing that line in there. Just take your time. And then I'm going to come back with this tool. Come back with my swivel knife. And I'm going to scribe this line in here. And I'm going to cut it. Again, take your time and turn your piece. Mm -hmm. 
just like so. And then I'm going to come back. Now, you guys can imagine if I was really serious, I mean, cranking these out without doing a whole bunch of uh, tutoring or just lecturing, so to speak. I, you can really crank these out, man. You can really crank them out. They're not large projects. I'm going to come back with my modeling spoon to smooth out my my little channel that I got here. Just to smooth those little ticks down. And what this also does, and I don't know if I mentioned that before, is that this also, uh, I think one of my speakers failed. This also um, gives a little added burnishing to... Uh, your work too as well with the friction that's going back and forth it just gives it a little extra burnishing you guys can see that that's just that's for just from the modeling spoon just gives it a little extra burnishing now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and lay down my hearts but this is how this works um, and you can see this is the first one that I was going to do in the first video and this is why you want to take your time and really just focus in, especially with this tool, because one oops is a scrap. You can't do anything. You guys can see. I'm just going to be honest with you. I'm not one of those crafts that say I don't make mistakes. <laughs> uh, but you can see that the heart is off here, and then it starts to get off on the tool. I mean, on the, the, the stamping here. It starts to separate here, and it just goes from bad to worse. Started out pretty good, but then it was warped. So now I'm going to show you guys how to fix that because you would need to know how to not put out work like that. So what you want to do is first, you want to come down and lay your tool. I'm going to take the left side of my tool to the right side of my guideline or my start line. Taking the left side of the tool to the right side of the guideline. And I'm going to put that a little bit steeper than a 45, right? And I'm going to work my way up this line, legs to leg, line to line, all the way up, right? Take your time. Don't be in a rush. Don't be in a hurry. And just, hey, look, just enjoy the process. Enjoy the process. Now, we're going to put this right here. Now, as I'm getting closer to the top and it's getting starting to get a little tight, what are we going to do? I'm going to lean this tool over a little bit and give it a little love tap and finish out that row right there. So, now you guys can see, this is how we set this up. You want to lay that tool down at a 45 on your line and run it all the way up, leg to leg to leg to leg, and keep this on your center line. Right now, you can pretty much see this is half a heart shape just by turning that tool a little bit more than 45 degrees. You're starting to see half of that heart. Now, what we're going to do to get the other's half is I'm going to take the right side, the right side of my tool, and put it on the left side of my line and do the exact same thing. But before I stamp it. I want to make sure that this is going to give me a good start on my heart. So I'm going to match my legs up, and I'm just going to barely push that. Now, your leather's already cased, so it's going to give a little bit of pressure. Just, 
It's a little push. Just so you can see the outline of that heart. And then you can see where you're going to start with the heart up here at the top. There it is right there. Okay. And I'm just going to barely push that in there. And then it's going to tell me where my line needs to be at. Right? Boom. Now I see how my heart is going to look. And then I just go back and follow those impressions that I put in there. So let's get right to it. So I'm going to go ahead and do here. And again, take your time because once you commit, it's a wrap at that point. All right. So I'm committed and I'm just going to walk up that same line just like I did on the other side. I'm just going to walk up my line with my tool. Now, it makes it easier once you start putting the points to point or the tips to tip. And then you can start seeing that heart shape really start to take effect. Now, this particular pattern is very popular amongst women, uh, little girls, teenage girls, young adults, people who, I mean, they, they can be into the fashion side on the count. I don't care about that part. But... It's just the something to know that these are stamped in hearts and you guys can see that already. Well, let me turn it over. You see your heart starting to take a shape. Now what I'm going to do is finish out the other two sides by doing the exact same thing on both sides. Now, this doesn't take you long because all you're going to do is, again, match those lines up. I'm going to do a little light impression and then I'm going to do one here to make sure that those are going to match up perfect. Boom. There we go. And so what I'm going to do first is just lean this in right here just a little bit. I don't want to go up into my border. So I'm just going to, just to finish that heart right there. And then I'm going to come right back down that same side and connect the points. Just connect the points. That's all you got to do. And if it's getting close to the border, all you would have to do at that point, ladies and gentlemen, is just rock your two. Rock your two. That, that need, might need to be a leather song. Rock your two. Rock your two. And just keep it moving. Just keep it moving. And it's all going to fill in. Now, what you're going to find yourself is you're going to have hearts, and you don't even have to fill all the way in. Now, what you're going to do, you're going to have hearts going and coming in both directions. You're going to have hearts going up the earring and then hearts going down both sides of the earring. Isn't that cool? Ha! That's cool. Now, I'm going to finish this off by just taking my camouflage tool. I'm going to take my camouflage tool, and I'm just going to hide those edges as always. And this is going to, all of the open ends, I'm just going to cover those up. Oh, man. This is turning out even better than I thought. Yeah, I might just go ahead and make a set of these real quick. I think I'm just going to go ahead and make a set of these. Now, and here's the beautiful part about these. You don't even have to... Do a lot of staining or dyeing. Sometimes you can just leave these just nice and oil. We've already seen what the, the uh, Neatswood oil does to the leather. I mean, it turns its just own uh, natural brown or natural tan color. So sometimes you can just oil them. Sometimes you can just uh, uh, put, um, put a little light dye on there. Now, uh, now, you never can go wrong with just doing your basic colors. Always just stick with your basic colors. So, uh, and then you that way you have variety to your customer base on what's on your table. Oh, man. Yeah. See the difference between the first one and the second one. This one here, you can see the hearts are a little lot more defined. And you can see why I just messed up on those. But... 
doing like these, you can probably crank out about five pairs of these and just do them in different colors. So it's the same design while you have those tools. So if I had did this correctly, I would have had, uh, I could have put four onto this piece of scrap. So I would have had, I would have did all four of them with the heart design. And the only thing I might would have changed is the camouflage tool, or I would have went like with this one here and put a border on this one and then left this one open. So it would have been a pair like this and then a pair like this, and then just done them in two separate colors. Now, the only thing left to do after this, ladies and gentlemen, is to where I would put my, um, my, I would put my, uh, put my hole punch here. So I will know, I will put my hole for my hole punch, so I will know where to punch these earrings out. Now, after this process, once you get this cut out, then you will come back with your slicker or your beeswax or your edge coat finish. Now, if you are if you are putting a back on them, you can put a back on them. Um, I was talking with someone yesterday on, the, uh, on my YouTube channel, well, on this channel, um, they use Talkalog. Now you can use Talkalog and just slick that backside down, uh, but you have to make sure you got your, that you have an edge slicker. Uh, the big, uh, I've seen them in two. Some come like in a polyurethane, uh, and then I've seen them in glass. The majority of people get them in glass. Uh, but I would just put a, a uh, leather skin on the back. So if you have some leather liner, or you can just go with a nice... Uh, one ounce piece and that, that way is leather on the front they'll see the grain on the front and the back and then you can put your uh, your maker's mark on the back if you do the leather uh, a leather uh, calf skin or goat skin or you can just do a one of a, a one ounce gray now if you're going to put a lining uh, like black or something like that you can't stamp into those but it would make that back side to where you can't see the grain side of the, the flesh side of that hide. But now again, now if you're going to cover these in some type of exotic hide or fur or whatever like that, I would suggest that you go ahead and stamp your maker's marker to the flesh side, flip it over, and put your contact submit on the flesh side, and then marry your flesh side of your leather to whatever hide or fur or, or skin that you're going to use. All right? Very simple leather pair earrings, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I was suggest you can sell these for anywhere from $15 to $25 a pair. Now, if you're getting into your exotic skins, quite naturally, Python, Western Diamond Back, um, those, those skins are really, really expensive. Uh, with the pythons, you, you, you're buying that by the meter. You're not buying it by the high. And I believe if, if Tandy still sells them, you got to buy three meters. That's nine feet. You got about a whole nine foot snake. And so <laughs> you, you got to <laughs> imagine now you got a nine foot snake and they're about eight, six to eight inches wide. So that's not that's not a uh, 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 a cheap product that uh, you uh, you want to get paid for that. So uh, Python earrings, I would go anywhere at thirty five to forty five dollars a piece. Uh, but your your Western Diamondbacks and your your uh, Cobra skins. Um, now you of course you want to get anywhere from thirty five to. 55 on those, but then everything else you can go from 15 to 25 dollars a pair, depending on how much tuning work you put into it, how much time you put in there. But again, like right now, I'm getting ready for an event in uh, uh, April, uh, uh, and that event. So my goal is to crank out at least five a day, five a day. So from this is December, so I got January, February, March, and then going. Uh, well, January, February, March, April. So I got three months. That's 90 days to do five a day. So you guys do the math on that. Just take the even numbers. I'm just going to do 30 days. So that's 150 a month that I need to have ready. So I want, I'm just going to dedicate one table 
to all leather earrings and small projects. You know, the uh, ID car wallets are going to be on that table because they're small. They don't take up a lot of space. So, and then I can just put these and let them do that thing. Hey, you guys, I'm the Leather Craftsman right here at Premier Leather Crafters in the Dirty South. I'm going to let you guys get back at it, and I'm going to get right back to work myself. Custom leather earrings. I'll see you guys on the other side. Peace.